All right, let's hope I didn't forget anybody. Hello everybody, Nikki Marr here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a fabulous week and are ready for another fun ranking video. And I am so unbelievably excited for today's video because this one is the one that has been the most heavily requested since I started my YouTube channel. Yes, today we are ranking Disney's sidekicks, some of the best characters that Disney has ever created. If you are excited for today's video, make sure to like down below and subscribe so that way you never miss magic from me. I first of all want to thank you all for being very patient with me as I know you have been waiting quite a while for this video, but this one I want to say has been about three weeks in the making. And let me tell you, this is by far the biggest ranking video that I have ever done because we are currently facing a list of eight 80 Disney characters that we are going to rank from worst to best. That's even bigger than the first video I ever did where I ranked every single Disney animated movie. But I am so excited because there are some of my favorite characters on this list today and I cannot wait to get into what makes them all so wonderful. And we have a lot to talk about today so let's keep this intro short and let's get into some of the fun stuff. Before we get started, I am going to jump into some quick disclaimers and conditions for the list today. But if you would like to jump right into the ranking, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost for the disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company. All of the opinions stated in this video are just mine and they do not reflect those of the company. I just happen to be a mega Disney fan who watches Disney movies pretty much on the daily. So I like to think I have a really strong connection to a lot of these characters, as I know so many of you do too. And secondly for the disclaimers, I welcome any and all opinions on this YouTube channel. So if your favorite Disney sidekick ends up in a really great place, make sure to tell me about them down below. And if I happen to rank a sidekick that you actually really love super low on my list, make sure to tell me down below why you love them and why you gravitate towards them so much. That's what I think is really wonderful about Disney is that there is truly something for everyone. So make sure to defend your favorite in the comments. And as for the conditions for today's list, first and foremost, as you may have already seen, I did a full ranking Disney pets video. Now all of the animals over on that video I do technically classify as pets and so none of those characters are going to carry over into today's video. The other conditions for the list are that these characters must come from an animated Disney movie so no other outside companies such as 20th Century Fox, Lucasfilms, or Pixar and these characters also must be created by the Walt Disney Company. And because there are so many wonderful Disney sidekicks I am going to limit each movie to seven sidekicks. Take a guess as to why it's seven. <laughs> And the final condition for today's list is that they must be a heroic sidekick. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean a sidekick in a Disney movie that is not villainous. There are many wonderful villain sidekicks, and I plan on doing a whole other ranking video just for them. So make sure to stay tuned for that super villainous video coming soon to a magical YouTube channel near you. <laughs> and with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we are ready to start ranking some Disney sidekicks. Again, one more time for those that skip the conditions, I do already have a full Disney pets video, and that video contains a lot of iconic Disney sidekicks, but those that are also considered pets. So again, if you're expecting to see a certain character on today's list and I don't list them, they very well might be over on that pets video. So I would definitely go check that one out. And like I said before, we have 80 characters to get through today. So we got to get going. So grab yourself a drink, a snack, sit back, relax, and let's rank some iconic Disney sidekicks. We are starting off all the way down at the bottom today at number 80, who is Hugo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now, this is the one sidekick whose presence in their movie, I believe, hurts the film more than helps it. Hunchback has a really solemn and somber tone, and the addition of these three gargoyles really just adds moments of comedy that really don't feel necessary. But with that, we'll move on to number 79 on my list, who is Ling from Mulan. Now, Ling is helpful in terms of the war, but in all honesty, he really comes across as sort of arrogant and... Yeah, I don't really love his energy. And on a similar note at number 78 is Yao, also from Mulan. While I think Ling and Yao both have their moments in this movie that are really, really awesome, again, they're just not some of my favorites. Moving on to number 77 on my list is Dr. Watson from The Great Mouse Detective. Hi, editing Nikki, it is Dawson, not Watson. Watson is from Sherlock Holmes. Dawson is from Great Mouse Detective. Come on, Disney Nikki, I expect more. Now, I don't dislike this character. I just don't really think he's as iconic as a lot of the other Disney sidekicks on this list. Clearly. 
And again, in a similar vein, we are moving on to number 76 on my list, who is Dodger from Oliver and Company. Again, not a bad character at all, just not one that's super memorable to me and not really one that I gravitate towards a lot. At number 75 on my list, for very similar reasons as number 80, is Victor from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now, I like this gargoyle a little bit more than Hugo, but not by much. He's just all right. Kind of wish he didn't exist in his movie, though but to me has a little bit more memorable of a personality than Dodger and Dr. Watson. At number 74 on my list, pretty much the only Disney sidekick that doesn't appear in their original animated movie is Angel from Lilo and Stitch. Again, Angel was a lovely addition to the Lilo and Stitch canon. She didn't come from the original animated movie, but I think she's very, very cute, and I did want to include her on today's list. For all of those out there that really love her. Moving on to number 73 on my list is Laverne from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that the Hunchback of Notre Dame's strengths lie in the music, in the story, in the main characters, but not in the side characters. <laughs> Moving on to number 72 on my list is Alan A. Dale from Robin Hood. Now, I like this character, but to me, he really just sings the opening number and then sort of blends into the background. Not bad, but definitely moving up on my list, but again, not amongst my favorites. Moving on to number 71 on my list is Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh. While I don't dislike Rabbit at all, he definitely is my least favorite of the Winnie the Pooh characters. In my opinion, he's just a little too cynical and a little bit too uptight. So I will give credit where credit is due. His 100 Acre Wood friends definitely even out his personality. Moving on to number 70 on my list is the March Hare from Alice in Wonderland. Again, not a bad character at all. To me, just has a little bit less personality than every other sidekick in his movie. I know I'm moving through these really, really fast, but there are gonna be a lot more lengthy explanations for my favorites, I promise. Moving on to number 69 on my list is Turk from Tarzan. I like Turk. I think Turk has a really great personality. However, sometimes I can find her a little annoying. However, there is a sidekick in the movie Tarzan that captures my attention a little bit more and we'll get to him a little bit later. Moving on to number 68 on my list is Rhino from Bolt. Now I know a lot of people like Rhino and I do think he is very sweet and endearing. However, again, I think he is the most annoying of the three leading characters. I don't think he's bad by any means. I just much more enjoy watching Bolt and Mittens. At number 67 on my list is Little Noi from Raya and the Last Dragon. I think this little baby is so unbelievably cute. I love her very, very much. However, again, because she's not necessarily a speaking character, we really don't get a ton of personality from her. At number 66 on my list is Owl from Winnie the Pooh. Now, my like in this character versus Rabbit is a significant jump up in the Hundred Acre Woods gang. I like Owl quite a bit, and I absolutely love his little hidden tribute to Mr. Toad in the Winnie the Pooh ride. Moving on up to number 65 to round out another trio that we've already discussed is Chen Po from Mulan. I think Chen Po is the most likable of the army trio that we meet in Mulan. He is very lovable and sweet and also partakes in a lot of the great moments that the trio has. Definitely my favorite amongst the three. Moving on up to number 64 on my list is Boon, again from Riot and the Last Dragon. I really like this character. I think this is the first one that has a personality that I would identify as memorable. He has certain story points that really make you feel for him, and I really like this character and his connection with the main character, Riot. Moving on up to number 63, a movie that I'm still not done talking about is Fluter Flom from The Black Cauldron. While definitely my least favorite of the trio in that movie, being Taran, Ilanwi, and Fluter Flom, of which Taran appears in my Disney Heroes video and Princess Ilanwi appears in my Disney Heroines video and you can totally check those out if you'd like as well. <laughs> but Fluter Flom, in my opinion, leaves a little bit less of a lasting impression. He definitely has moments in the movie where he's able to de-escalate any situations that are happening between the trio, so I do want to give him credit for that. But other than that, I think there are a lot more stronger points that I could talk about for hours on end in The Black Cauldron, and Fluter Flom is just not one of them. He's not bad at all. He's just outshined. Moving on up to number 62 on my list is Little John from Robin Hood. I really like this big lovable bear. He is so fun and such a great help to Robin Hood in this movie. He adds to certain moments of chaos, has great comedic timing, and we really don't know where Robin Hood would be without him. Moving on up to number 61, we're talking about the little kid from the Hundred Acre Woods, which is Rue from Winnie the Pooh. 
Pooh. Rue is so adorable. I think he's really, really cute. I just think, once again, much like a lot of the characters we've discussed so far, there are so many more with much more developed personalities, and so I wish Rue had gotten a little bit more time to develop his personality on screen. Moving on up to number 60 on my list, we have already talked about 20 characters, can you believe it? We are going on to Fix-It Felix from Wreck-It Ralph, and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Now Fix-It Felix is a really cool sidekick, and what I like about him is that he's technically the main character of the game that he and Wreck-It Ralph come from. But in these movies, Ralph definitely takes the main seat, and Felix takes the side character seat. Moving on up to number 59 on my list is Pacha from The Emperor's New Groove. Seeing as he comes from a great buddy comedy, Pacha has wonderful moments of comedy with Emperor Cusco, and I think he's just such a wonderful, loving, and devoted father. Nothing wrong with him, just a lot more characters that I like a lot more. Moving on up to number 58 on my list is Nakoma from Pocahontas. Now, I actually quite enjoy this character. There's only one thing that lands her such a low spot on my list, which is the fact that she snitched on Pocahontas, causing a little battle between Kokoam and John Smith which ends up in the passing of Kokoam. If she had just left Pocahontas alone and trusted her when Pocahontas said to her that she was okay, it might not have ended up that way. Not a bad character, just a little bit too protective over Pocahontas. Moving on up to number 57 on my list is Timon from The Lion King. Now you might be thinking this is a little bit low for a character that comes from such a great movie. And yes, you are right. In my opinion, Lion King definitely has really strong moments, but in my opinion, the side characters just aren't in those talking points. I really love the music and the story and the main characters once again for this movie, and the side characters just don't happen to be my favorite. Now, I love Timon in the Festival of the Lion King at the Animal Kingdom, but his presence in the movie isn't really super impressive to me. With that, we're moving on up to number 56 on my list, who is Kanga from Winnie the Pooh. Now, Kanga is such a wonderful mother to Roo. I absolutely love this adorable kangaroo. She's definitely a bit of a worrywart, but how could you not be with a child as spirited as Roo? Moving on up to number 55 on my list is Tantor from Tarzan. Now, this is the Tarzan sidekick that I like quite a bit. Tantor is really cute, super funny, and I think he has a wonderful presence in his movie. He's a great friend to Tarzan and very welcoming to Jane in the Jungle, and overall I think his presence really helps the movie. Moving on up to number 54 on my list, the first of seven iconic characters, who is Sleepy from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now as a whole, I absolutely love the Seven Dwarfs, but of course I had to split them up for this list because each one of them has a wonderfully different personality from the others. And while I do not dislike Sleepy at all, in my opinion he just has the least amount to do in the movie. Really the only memorable moment that he has in this movie, to me, is when he suggests that maybe the Queen has got Snow White. Again, he's very cute and I love him, but he is definitely my least favorite of the Seven Dwarves. Moving up to number 53 on my list, who is Flower from Bambi. I love Flower quite a bit. He is super, super cute. But the reason he ranks so low is that he doesn't have a lot of screen time in his movie. A lot of that is reserved for Bambi and all of his story points, as well as Thumper. But Flower is so cute and I absolutely wanted to give him the time that he deserves in this video. And with that, we're moving on up to number 52 on my list, who is a boo from Aladdin. I can already hear the hate comments. <laughs> now don't get me wrong, Aladdin isn't my favorite movie and I've said that before, but Abu, in my opinion, actually holds Aladdin back a lot more than he helps him. Don't get me wrong, he has his moments, but he's definitely mischievous, definitely a troublemaker, and I think he causes Aladdin quite a bit of trouble. But the reason why he doesn't rank at the very bottom is because that trouble is very fun to watch. And with that, we're moving on to number 51 on my list, who is Pumbaa from The Lion King. Once again, stating that the Lion King sidekicks are not my favorite, but I do think Pumbaa is a little bit more iconic than Timon. Again, love seeing him in the Festival of the Lion King, but in terms of his movie, he's just not one of my favorites. And with that, we've reached number 50 on my list, who is Michael Darling from Peter Pan. Michael is absolutely adorable. He's, of course, Wendy Darling's little brother, but the reason why he won't make it any higher than this is that he's away from London for, what, two, three days tops? And he forgets who his mother is, mistaking her for Nana, the house dog. <laughs> Now he's a little kid, we'll give him a pass just this once, but I'm not ranking him any higher than this. <laughs> but with that, we are moving up to number 49 on my list. We are gonna go with John Darling, again from Peter Pan. 
Being the other little brother of Wendy Darling, John acts as the leader of the Lost Boys, which I find to be very strange considering he's never been to Neverland. I don't know, to me this whole taking up a leadership position somewhere where he's never been just seems a little off. And I think he just suffers in the same department as his brother, which is that he's just not emotionally mature enough. Moving on up to number 48 on my list though is Tongue from Raya and the Last Dragon. Now this sidekick has the first truly tragic backstory. I feel so badly for Tongue and again, much like Little Noi, has that backstory that perfectly leads the two of them together to become a brand new family. However, the difference with Tong is that he's able to speak and convey all of this, and hearing the sadness behind his voice just makes the entire situation so heartbreaking. But again, so wonderful that he has little Noi at the end of the movie and is able to start a brand new family. Moving on up to number 47 on my list is Zazu from The Lion King. Now Zazu really just seems like a stick in the mud. While he is really helpful to Mufasa, to Simba, he really is just an annoyance. Simba's young and free and he wants to have fun with his friend Nala. And Zazu just tries to keep him in line. And as a viewer, we are kind of along the same emotional line as Simba where we just want to see him have fun. And Zazu just kind of gets in the way of that. I don't dislike him, but he's definitely not amongst my favorites. Moving up to number 46 on my list is Jose Carioca from Saludos Amigos. Now, Jose Carioca is a wonderful character. I really love him. He is fun, he is musical, he has a lot interesting about him. And I love always getting to see him in the Grand Fiesta Tour at Epcot. And in pretty much the very same vein at number 45 is Panchito, also from The Three Caballeros. I love him for the very same reasons as Jose Carioca. The only difference is that he is the lead singer of the trio that makes up The Three Caballeros. And I really love his voice. Moving up to number 44 on my list is Pico, the lovable toucan from Encanto. For a character that has little screen time and doesn't speak, this toucan has a lot of attitude. He is so cute, so fun, I have nothing bad to say about him except I wish we got to see more of him. And with that, we'll move up to number 43 on my list, who is Philoctetes from Hercules. Now Phil, while also being sort of a stick in the mud, much like Zazu, does it in a lot more comedic way. He tries to keep Hercules in line and succeeds for the most part. But what makes him rank higher than every other person on this list so far is really his connection with the main character. He and Hercules have such a wonderful connection and it lasts all the way through to the end of the movie and it's really special to see them hang on to each other. Moving on up to number 42 on my list is Timothy Q. Mouse from Dumbo. Now, Timothy is so unbelievably sweet and lovable. I mean, he helps Dumbo, who is this infant elephant who finds himself in so much trouble. And Timothy just serves as this guardian and really watches over Dumbo and keeps him safe. And it's just so sweet and special to watch. Ah! I love Dumbo so much and I want to do a full ranking Disney animals in the future. And he will definitely be on that list as well. Moving on up to number 41 on my list is the White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. Now, while we don't get the biggest personality from him other than being late, we gotta give credit where credit's due. The entire movie wouldn't happen if Alice wasn't trying to follow the White Rabbit and find out what he was late for. So we have Alice in Wonderland because of the White Rabbit. And I do like him quite a bit. I think it's really fun getting to see his anxiousness with making sure he's going to end up being on time, especially when we find out it's for the Queen's Court. I wouldn't want to be late for that either. And with that, we've reached number 40, the halfway point in today's list. So big congratulations to all the characters from here on up because they have reached the top half of my favorites. Moving up to number 40 on my list is Sneezy from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Sneezy, again, much like Sleepy, is a character I absolutely love. However, he really just doesn't do a whole lot. However, his moments of comedy sort of center around his hay fever, which gets him into trouble a few times. And while that's all really fun to watch, he just doesn't end up being one of the most lovable of the dwarves. And with that, we're moving on up to number 39 on my list, who is Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. I think Tigger is so much fun. He is a great character. However, sometimes he has a little bit too much energy and that's coming from me. <laughs> but I think he is a wonderful friend to Winnie the Pooh. I think he is a very necessary and important part of the Hundred Acre Wood. And I think everybody that meets him and comes into contact with him has a wonderful experience. I absolutely love the Tigger meet and greet at Disney World. And yeah, he just puts a smile on my face. 
at number 38 on my list is Tweedledee and Tweedledum from Alice in Wonderland. And I'm not separating them because they're the same character. <laughs> but the reason why I actually really love these characters is they give us a whole side segment in this movie that has nothing to do with the plot. The Walrus and the Carpenter is a really fun segment in Alice in Wonderland, and without these twins, we wouldn't have gotten it at all. At number 37 on my list is Piglet from Winnie the Pooh. Piglet is absolutely adorable. I love him so, so, so much. Piglet is very sweet, very endearing, but still not amongst my favorites of the Hundred Acre Wood clan. And so we're moving on to number 36, who is Happy from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now, Happy is such a sweet and lovable character. I really love him and all of his positivity. But again, that's really the only personality we get out of him. He's very sweet, very lovable, very welcoming to Snow White, but he's kind of just a happy character that is very middle of the road when it comes to the dwarves for me. But on a similar note, we're moving on up to number 35 on my list, who is Bashful from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now, Bashful is such a cute character because he has a secret crush on Snow White. Every time he interacts with her, he turns bright red and just gets absolutely flustered. And it's so cute to watch. He's so sweet and endearing and absolutely deserves a spot in the top half of today's list. Moving on up to number 34 on my list, who is Scuttle from The Little Mermaid. Now, I think Scuttle is very sweet and endearing and I think he is quite a bit of a scatterbrain. The comedy that he brings to the movie is really sweet and funny considering he has Ariel calling all of these human things by completely wrong names. But while I like what he adds to the movie in terms of the plot, much like disturbing the wedding and making sure that Ariel ends up with Eric rather than Vanessa, the character himself is just not my favorite. I do find him a little annoying, but I do think that's intentional by the creative directors. So in that case, he is a very successful character, just not one of my favorites. With that, we're moving on up to number 33 on my list, who is Gurgi from The Black Cauldron. Now, Gurgi is a wonderful character, and the reason why he ranks up so high is that he self-sacrifices in order to stop the Horned King and the Black Cauldron. While this little guy seems a little annoying at first, he is so brave and sweet and caring when it comes to our main trio. Tarn was originally going to sacrifice himself into the cauldron, but Gurgi wanted to make sure that his friend was safe and protected. But luckily enough, we didn't have to lose any of our characters and Gurgi survives in the end. Moving on up to number 32 on my list is Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast. The first of our Beauty and the Beast characters and there's more to come. Now, I love Cogsworth. I think he is such a great character. And while he is tightly wound, no pun intended, in certain scenes, I think he adds the perfect amount that a character could of being a stickler in order to keep everybody else in line. And I think he's also one of the most successful stickler characters. Considering his energy is very proper and a lot of the other characters that are fun and zany just mess with him, he is the one that seems annoyed by everyone else rather than being an annoyance to others. But yeah, Cogsworth has a really special place in my heart and I love him very much. <laughs> but moving on up to number 31, we have Coda from Brother Bear. Now this little bear is so sweet and when you find out his backstory, it is truly heartbreaking. But what I love about him is that he learns to trust Kenai and eventually ends up with an adopted older brother. And while again, he has moments where he can seem a little annoying, this is totally on purpose because he's supposed to be the annoying little brother to Kenai. And even through all of that, Kenai still decides to stay with Coda at the end. I think he is a very sweet and endearing character. Moving on up to number 30 on my list is Jacques from Lady and the Tramp. I really love this character. I think he is so interesting and so fun. I love that he, Trusty, and Lady have an entire background before the movie even starts. And what I also love is that he appears as a hidden character in a lot of other animal-led Disney movies. And if you're curious to find out where he's hiding, I have an entire video dedicated to hidden Disney characters in other Disney movies that you can check out later. But with that, we're moving on up to number 29 on my list, who is Trusty from Lady and the Tramp, the other half of this iconic canine duo. I think Trusty is very sweet. I love his entire story about having lost his sense of smell, but at the end, revealing that it was never lost and that he was able to track down the tramp when he was in danger. I love this character so much and I cannot say enough good things about Trusty. He is such a sweet little canine. With that, we're moving on up to number 28 on my list, who is Flora from Sleeping Beauty, the first in this trio of good fairies. Now, while I like Flora quite a bit, I do think she is actually the most 
silly of the trio. Even though she's the unofficial leader of the group, she sometimes makes decisions or has logic that doesn't necessarily make sense. And if she were to go with the first thing that came off the top of her head, events in the movie might have ended up a little bit differently, and not for the better. I definitely think it's better that she takes the advice of her other two fairies in her trio. And with that, we're moving on up to number 27 on my list, who is Dahlia from Disney's Wish. I love this character. She is, of course, meant to mirror the character of Doc from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And she is so wonderful and such a great friend to Asha and so strong in being able to help Asha against the evil Kang Magnifico. Even though she walks with a slight limp, it doesn't stop her from doing anything that any of the other characters are doing. And I think she is so sweet and endearing and I absolutely love this character. And with that, we'll move on up to number 26 on my list, who is Elliot from Pete's Dragon. Now, I may have cheated a little bit because this is technically a live action movie, not an animated movie, but he is an animated character, so I'm gonna count it. Elliot is the absolutely lovable dragon friend to Pete. He's able to disappear and reappear at will. And what I love so much about him is that so many people don't really know who he is, even though he's appeared as a float in one of Disney's most iconic parades, the Main Street Electrical Parade. If you haven't seen Pete's Dragon, and make sure to check it out because it is so good. It is such a classic and I absolutely love this movie and this character. Moving on up to number 25, one that you guys might be a little surprised to hear considering my favorite Disney movie, but at number 25 is Sebastian from The Little Mermaid. Now, while I love Sebastian, I have to rank him severely low because he is the reason that King Triton ends up finding Ariel's grotto and destroying all of her treasures. While Sebastian is very helpful to Ariel in a lot of other scenes, this one scene just breaks my heart and I wish he was a little bit better at keeping the secret for Ariel. But he has really fantastic songs and some great chase sequences that are really comedic with Chef Louie. Moving on up to number 24 on my list, who is Flit from Pocahontas. Now Flit is absolutely adorable. I think he is a beautiful hummingbird. And the only thing I wish is that he could talk so that way we could get a lot of his thoughts. But he has great chemistry with a lot of the other characters in this movie. Moving on up to number 23 on my list is Thumper from Bambi. Thumper is absolutely adorable and such a wonderful friend to Bambi. And you can always pick him out in a crowd of little bunnies because his foot's always thumping. Oh, he's so cute. I love Thumper. And with that, we're moving on up to number 22 on my list, who is Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Eeyore is definitely one of my favorites when it comes to the Hundred Acre Wood crew. I love Eeyore and as down and sad as he seems, I think a lot of his glumness and his gloominess actually makes him so endearing to so many people. And his glumness also makes the Hundred Acre Woods group come together and sort of help bring his spirits up. I love the energy that he brings to the group and I think Eeyore deserves all of the love in the world. Moving on up to number 21 on my list is Doc from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now we're getting to some of my favorite dwarfs on the list. Doc is the unofficial official leader of the Seven Dwarfs. He is the only dwarf to not be named after an emotion or an adjective, really. And yeah, he makes a lot of decisions that end up helping Snow White. And he also listens to her quite a bit, which is very sweet and wonderful. Moving on up to number 20 on my list is Baymax from Big Hero 6. Now, while admittedly Big Hero 6 is not one of my favorite Disney films, I can't help but absolutely love Baymax. He's like this big, plush, lovable marshmallow. He's so cute. I love that his only goal is to make other people feel better and to heal them. And this is what I think makes him a wonderful sidekick to Hero because throughout the story, he also does that for Hero. Moving on up to number 19 on my list is Fauna from Sleeping Beauty, the second of the three good fairies. Now Fauna is very sweet and very maternal. Right off the bat, when the three fairies find out they're going to be raising Princess Aurora, Fauna jumps right into wanting to take care of the baby. She is very, very sweet, very lovable, and while her cooking skills could use a little work, I think there is a lot of room for improvement with this cute little fairy. With that, we'll move on up to number 18 on my list, who is Mushu from Mulan. Now, when I said the sidekicks from Mulan were my favorite, I definitely didn't mean this little dragon. Mushu is so funny, and his moments of comedy just light up this movie. The banter back and forth that he has with Kriki, who appears on my Disney Pets list, is absolutely wonderful. And I think he absolutely earns his place amongst the Guardians at the end of the movie. Moving on up to number 17 on my list is the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland. Now, the Mad Hatter is easily 
one of the most iconic characters in the movie, and he, along with Alice, are really the two characters that I think of when it comes to mentioning Alice in Wonderland. If you've ever gotten the chance to meet him at Disney World, you know he's absolutely zany and crazy. I love his character design. I think he adds so much to the movie, even though he only appears in two scenes. But with that, we'll move on up to number 16 on my list, who is the Magic Carpet from Aladdin. For being a rug, this little carpet has quite a bit of personality. Carpet is non-speaking, but he makes such a wonderful impact in his movie, truly becoming one of the group between Aladdin, Genie, Abu, and the carpet. Carpet is extremely helpful to Aladdin throughout the entire movie, and even takes part in one of the best songs in the movie, A Whole New World. Aladdin truly wouldn't be Aladdin without the magic carpet. Moving on to number 15 on my list. Now, these are probably what I would consider my favorites. At number 15 is Charlotte LaBeouf from Princess and the Frog. I love this character. I think she is so funky and zany and spunky. She has wonderful moments of comedy, but also really tender moments of sweetness with Princess Tiana, lending her a dress at the masquerade ball when Tiana gets dirty, and even kissing Naveen without the promise of marriage so that way Tiana and Naveen can turn back into humans. Charlotte LaBeouf is a wonderful character. I truly love her so much, and she absolutely deserves number 15 on the list. Moving up to number 14 on my list is Chip from Beauty and the Beast. Now Chip is so sweet and cute, but while he is a little child in the movie, he also is quite helpful, considering he breaks Belle and Maurice out of their basement when Gaston locks them there, freeing them so that way they can race back to the castle so Belle can help the beast. He's so sweet and so cute, and he actually originally was going to have a lot less to do in his movie before creators heard his voice, so I am very glad that Chip has quite a bit to do in his movie. But moving on up to number 13 on my list is Grumpy from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now what I love about this dwarf is that he easily is the character in this movie that has the biggest character arc. Over Snow White, over the Queen, over the Prince, over any of the other six dwarves. Grumpy is the one that goes from completely disliking Snow White and thinking that she is a danger to all of them because the queen is out for her, to being the first one that jumps into action when Snow White is in danger, and he leads the rest of the group to rescue her. I love Grumpy, and I love the arc that he has taken, and Grumpy at the end of this movie is such a sweetheart. But moving on up to number 12 on my list is Meriwether from Sleeping Beauty. Yes, the final fairy in this iconic trio, Meriwether is the reason that Princess Aurora was able to survive Maleficent's curse. While Meriwether is unable to undo the curse that Maleficent has left on Aurora, she definitely is able to change it a bit in order to make it more realistic for Aurora to awaken. Meriwether, I have to mention, is also absolutely hysterical, having some really great moments with Flora and Fauna. Moving on up to number 11 on my list is Mrs. Potts from Beauty and the Beast. Mrs. Potts is such a sweetie. I absolutely love this cute little teapot. Mrs. Potts is one of the first characters that emotionally comes to Belle in order to be with her after she has just been captured by the Beast and has had to watch her father be taken away without saying goodbye. Mrs. Potts is a constant reminder to cheer up and that it will all turn out okay in the end. She is an absolutely wonderful character and I cannot say enough good things about her. But with that, we have reached the top 10 of my favorite Disney sidekicks. But before we get into the top 10, make sure to leave down below who you think is gonna be in my top 10. At number 10 on my list, is Miko from Pocahontas. I love Miko. I think he is so cute, so sweet, and gets into just the right amount of trouble. I absolutely love the animation that the animators gave him in Just Around the River Bend, and I also love the moments of comedy between him and Percy. It just adds so much personality to this character. With that, we'll move on up to number nine on my list. Probably one of the most iconic Disney characters is the genie from Aladdin. Now, genie, of course, perfectly portrayed by Robin Williams, is a fan favorite. He is one of the most magical of all the Disney characters, of course, being able to grant wishes. But I love that him and Aladdin create such a wonderful and genuine relationship. And he even often gives Aladdin great advice when Aladdin isn't necessarily being truthful. Genie really encourages him to straighten out his moral compass, and this is why I really, really like this character. Moving on up to number eight on my list, who is Flounder from The Little Mermaid? I think you all knew that a Little Mermaid character was absolutely going to be in my top ten, but I love this adorable little guppy. Flounder is a little jumpy and skittish fish who really isn't a flounder at all, but is very, very sweet and cute. And he is such a wonderful companion to Ariel. And I absolutely love the scene when he is bringing her to the grotto to surprise her with the statue of Prince Eric, because he knows how much that means to her. Oh, what a cute little fish. 
fish. I love flounder. But with that, we'll move on up to number seven on my list, my favorite of the seven dwarves, who is Dopey. I think he's pretty much an instant favorite to everybody, and while I can't necessarily describe why, I just love his energy and how sweet and lovable he is. He is always helpful to Snow White, he's always helpful to his dwarf friends, even when he doesn't have a whole lot to say. With that, we're moving on up to number six on my list, who is Lewis, the adorable, fun-loving gator from Princess and the Frog. I love how talented this alligator is, and he, once again, has so many amazing moments of comedy. Having always wanted to play with a human audience in a human band, this often gets him into trouble considering he does not necessarily blend in. But I love that Tiana is able to help make his dream come true at the very end, and I think he just absolutely has a heart of gold. Oh, the top five. We have reached the top five. I am so nervous, but I am so excited. Okay, here we go. At number five on my list, is Jiminy Cricket from Pinocchio. Now, while I can absolutely say that I had to add this sidekick for his song alone, When You Wish Upon a Star is easily one of the most iconic Disney songs, I also love Jiminy Cricket as a character. He is enlisted at the beginning of the movie to be Pinocchio's conscience by the Blue Fairy. And while he is definitely not the strongest candidate to accomplish this job, I think he absolutely grows into this role, eventually teaching Pinocchio some really valuable life lessons about telling the truth truth and being honest and brave and sincere. So while yes, I had to add him for his iconic song, I also really love this character, and I think it's always so fun to get to see him walking around the Disney parks. With that, we're moving on up to number four on my list, who is Olaf the Snowman from Frozen and Frozen 2. Now, Need I say more than, some people are worth melting for. While he obviously has such wonderful moments of comedy, of course being voiced by the incomparable Josh Gad, Olaf often throws in the one-liners that just absolutely land every time you watch this movie, and he's also very much in a childlike state of mind throughout these movies, so a lot of the other characters often have to deal with his childlike mind in a lot of different fun ways, either ignoring questions or very much having to explain in detail as to why certain things aren't done, and it just makes for great comedy. But it also stands that Olaf has some great songs. I think In Summer is one of the best songs in Frozen 1, along with the songs of the two sisters. And I also really just love his character design. I think it is so cute that he's just a simple snowman, but has become so incredibly iconic in pop culture today. And with that, we are moving on up to number three on my list, who is Lumiere from Beauty and the Beast. Now, this candlestick can put on a show better than almost any other Disney character that I know. Lumiere has easily one of the best songs in Beauty and the Beast with Be Our Guest. He is a showman through and through. He has such funny banter with Cogsworth and a lot of the other servants in the castle. He is a fierce, loyal, and true friend to Belle and Beast. And he is a really fierce help in the final battle between the villagers and the servants of the castle. He's just an absolute icon through and through, and I can't help but absolutely light up whenever he comes on screen. Up next is number two on my list, who is the star from Disney's Wish. Hang on, I'll be right back. I have a little special guest. I'm back. Ah! <laughs> oh, wait, hang on. He lights up! <laughs> Now, Star was an instant new favorite of mine when this movie came out. While he doesn't speak a single line in this entire movie, he just lights up the screen whenever he is on it. Again, he has those perfect moments of comedy, much like a lot of our other favorite Disney characters, but he also adds so much to this movie, iconically being referred to as the wishing star that so many others have wished upon before. And in his character design, he also was made out to resemble Mickey Mouse. You can really see it a lot in the old-fashioned Mickey Mouse, where he had the pie-eye sort of look and the almost heart-shaped face here. But yeah, the star is so cute. He references is so many other Disney movies, and I think he is just the perfect addition to all of the other magical Disney characters that bring Disney magic to life. I can absolutely see this little cutie becoming as iconic as a lot of other incredible Disney characters. Thank you so much for your time, Star. I'll put you back on the shelf now. <laughs> but with that, we have reached my number one spot of favorite Disney sidekick character ever. At number one is Rey from Princess and the Frog, or should I say, Raymol. I love this little firefly so much. He is so sweet. He is brave and loyal to the point 
of sacrificing his own life so that Tiana and Naveen might become human again. It is also so incredibly cute to watch him fall in love with the star that he names Evangeline and believe so truly that they are meant to be together that they actually are once Ray joins the night sky. Yes, while we end up losing this cute little firefly to Dr. Facilier's foot in this movie, we end up learning that he has joined the night sky and his love, Evangeline. I absolutely cannot say enough good about this little firefly. He truly makes me smile throughout my entire body whenever he is on screen in his movie. His two songs, including Gonna Take You There and Mabel Evangeline, are just so sweet. And every time that he speaks and sings on screen, I just want to give him a big hug. I just, I just love him so much. I always love that he is looking out for all of the other characters and making sure that everyone gets their happily ever after. And earlier this week, we got the news that Tiana's Bayou Adventure is opening up on June 28th. And I am so excited to see this brand new ride. And while our friend Ray will most likely not be in this ride, considering the ride actually takes place after the events of Princess and the Frog, and Ray doesn't survive the event of Princess and the Frog, we do get a fun little nod to Ray on the outside of the attraction. If you happen to look up at the water tower, you'll see that there is a Princess Tiana crown sitting on top of it. Well, hidden in the little crown are two little stars, which are meant to represent Evangeline and Ray. So even though Ray can't join us on this adventure, at least we know that he is absolutely there in spirit. And that just absolutely warms my heart. Oh, and 80 characters later, we have finally finished my ranking of favorite Disney sidekicks. Now hang on a second, because you might have noticed there are a few characters missing. Well, before you comment down below and let me know which characters I missed, definitely go and check out my Ranking Disney Pets video because there are a lot of characters that are considered sidekicks in that video, but as long as they were pets, I considered putting them into that video first. So definitely go check out that video and see if your favorite characters ended up in that video instead. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about all of these amazing sidekicks. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And if you'd like to find me on my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. And it warms my heart so much to know that you all are enjoying this content so much. And believe me when I say there is plenty more magic to come. But until then, have a magical rest of your week and I'll see y'all real soon.